Welcome back. I'm Mabel Jong, and you're watching day one coverage of the World Health Care Congress here in Washington, D.C. And I'm so very pleased to have with me Susan Mosier, who is Medicaid Director in the state of Kansas. Susan, thank you so much. Thank you, Mabel, for having me. Well, we talk a lot about the, the way forward for health care, but one thing for sure, it seems to be technology and its role in health care. Tell me about your personal experience with that. Well, we are very interested in what we can do with technology today that we couldn't do 15, 20 years ago and how we're going to leverage that in our state. So I'm going to give a simple example um, and kind of a funny one. But when I got to D.C. here five years ago, um, I didn't have my curlers. So I pulled out my cell phone, my smartphone. I went to my Around Me app. I pulled up the Walgreens that were in the area, there were six. I tapped on one of those. Um, I tapped on the phone. I called and told them my situation. They said, hey, they were really good salespeople. And they said, we've got one left, so hurry up and get, come. And so then I was able to tap on the address, up popped a GPS map, and I was able to go and get the curlers. So it was one of those things that I couldn't have done 15 years ago, but I can do now. The technology has changed so much in just a little over a decade. And so really, we have that same sort of power that we can leverage in healthcare. And if you think about it, the smartphone is like that data analytics engine that we're looking at. The cell phone infrastructure and the GPS that we had are like the health IT infrastructure. And then the really key thing that Apple did that was so bold and that really made that difference is that they open sourced their applications and then anyone who had any interest or aptitude could actually create apps. So it was people on the front lines who said, well, what do I want? What do I need? And they created these applications. And so really when we think about value-based care and other things that we're doing in healthcare is if we can really empower and enable the individuals on the front lines, so the healthcare professionals that really know what drives quality, what will really move the needle, if they can have that data analytics tool right in front of them and be able to read an, an article and a journal article and say, well, wait, I want to go apply that to my population, my patients, and see how do I, how do I uh, move the needle on care for these individuals, and then how do I share it with other people? So that's really what we think is huge potential there and, and one of the things that we want to do in our state and share with others. Absolutely very, very powerful. How are you using the technology uh, to give you a leg up when you're pursuing your patient-centered care programs and your, pers your person-centered care programs? Well, one of the things is we've really shifted the paradigm in how we think about healthcare. So, if you think about the evolution of healthcare, we started with patient centered healthcare, we moved to provider centered healthcare, and then we moved to uh, payer centered healthcare. And now, really, where we are is person centered healthcare. But if you think about healthcare, um, and you think about that traditional relationship, that patient-doctor relationship that's at the center of healthcare, that relationship is where diagnoses are made, where treatment is delivered, where trust is developed. And as we move farther into whole person care, into social determinants of health, there are even more relationships that come into play. So in that area, um, what we have is we have family, we have education, we have employment. Those are the three factors that correlate best with changing internal, internal motivation and changing behavior for an individual. So those are, it's those relationships that help people to make the changes that they need to make. Mm -hmm. What are you most proud of in your work at, in Kansas and what could people take from that uh, that are here from other states? most proud of is the team that we have working together. I think the people that work in Medicaid are some of the most intelligent, dedicated, committed people, and they really are thinking about what can we do to help these beneficiaries, what can we do to help these members. And so they're being very innovative, and, and what we want to be able to do um, in our state is to work with CMS, to work with our federal partners to say, hey, let's think outside of the box, let's think strategically, and let's think how can we move this forward in ways that we haven't even thought of before, and it's really that team that makes that difference. Okay, and any other key takeaways you'd like to leave with our membership? Well, I the think there, there's, um, I would say, three critical success factors in health okay. system reform. And one of those is really harnessing and leveraging data. So we need timely, accurate, and skinny data. Mm -hmm. um, that skinny data is a term that I learned here last year, which is that that's targeted, actionable information. Um, that we have that relationship-centered healthcare. And that we also have, um, 
really that user, end user engagement and empowerment. And so it's not just that they're engaged, but they're actually empowered to, for a, a patient or a person to be empowered to move um, forward. And I, I think an example of that is, uh, is a pilot that we've done around person-centered healthcare, um, or actually relationship-centered healthcare. Um, what we have is we're really looking at health beliefs, motivations, and values, and we're trying to get to know the person better. Um, if you take an individual who, who really feels like they can change um, their behaviors, who feels like they see a pathway to success, that prevention works, then all we really need to do um, as a healthcare professional is that we can provide them education and the tools to do that. But if we have an individual who, who is obese and who hasn't had um, success with any of their diets and, and really um, just has been having a difficulty, doesn't feels like it's bad genes, they're in a different mindset. And how do you learn more about that person so that you can deal with that issue and so that you can bring them to the point where they can change their internal thinking to be able to change their behaviors and change their, their life, um, their health and their life in the future. And so, so we're piloting basically um, something called micro-segmentation and really understanding people better so that we can better serve them. Interesting work. Well, thank you so much, Susan, for your time today. Well, thank you, Mabel, for having me. And I'm Mabel Jong. Thanks for watching.